Hey everyone, I'm Tim Holtz, Creative Director for Ranger. Now, if you like to color, Ranger's got some great tools to help you do just that. Uh, first up, I'll talk about our ink palette and show you some things that you can do with this, um, working with Distress and even alcohol ink for this. And also talk a little bit about the water brushes that I've done for Ranger. This is really cool. We've got a detailer tip and a flat tip. And between the water brushes, the palette, some ink and some creativity, you will be coloring just about everything in sight. Let's go. There's actually quite a few things you can do with the ink palette and the water brush. And what I love about the ink palette is the fact that it has a hinged jeweled lid. In other words, the lid or the top is clear and there's a little tab right there that you simply bend that out and of course this swings open. The bottom is a white plastic. It's flexible. Uh, it's also washable so if you fill it with things and you want to clean it out to fill it for other things you can. You'll see that the wells, I'll kind of tip that, they all have a little raised edge to them and it's really nice. It does have 36 wells in the palette which makes it really really cool. So what are the things uh, that you can fill it? Well here we go. First up of course we can go in with our re-inkers and we can take distress re-inkers and create a palette out of it. And the distress re-inkers are really really concentrated so when you put those in uh, they are very very thick. The great thing about distress re-inkers is that they won't ever dry in an ink palette so you can put that in and literally you can keep them in the ink palette for years and they won't ever dry up. And that's one of the important things about having that hinge lid so it keeps dust and things like that out of your palette. Of course you can also go in and you can do little swatch dots of color and you can take those little dots and stick those to the lid. I actually did that like a box of chocolates. In other words, uh, the color here will actually correspond to the color down there. So the top row up here will match the top row here. And I think it's easier for me to kind of uh, determine the color. But you can figure out a lot of different ways that you can create a color chart if you wanted to. And of course, that's if you filled all 36 wells. A lot of people use this just as a mixing palette as well. And I'll show you what you can do with the Distress Reinkers in just a minute. Speaking of Distress, we can also go in with the Distress Stain and we can create a palette using our Distress Stains. Now, the benefit to this is when I'm going to create a palette with Distress Stains, again, these do not dry up completely. They do dry quite a bit more than the reinkers because they're not thick or concentrated. Uh, but of course, because this is water-based, these will, will re-wet if they dry up. So let me show you right here. If I want to go in and put some of the stain into the palette, I can just take that and the top of the Distress Stain fits in, of course, to the well up there. So I'm just going to push that down and actually squeeze, and look at that. I can fill up that well with stain. So it's really nice if I wanted to go in and create my own stain palette if I was going to do a lot of watercolor in a sitting. But again, you can just let that evaporate, and it'll usually end up drying something like that, even if you have that much in there, because the stain, of course, has a lot of liquid to it. So let's talk about the difference in coloring between the re-inkers, of course, and the stains. The great thing about it is that, of course, both will be reactive with water. Both will be able to actually color a surface. But, of course, the effects are going to be quite different. So I'm going to go in and work with the water brush. And I've talked about the water brushes several times in the video. Again, the great thing about these water brushes is that they have a flow-controlled valve, which means when you go to fill it up, you need to put it under running water, actually squeeze and release to actually fill the chamber with water. But once you do that, the water is not going to pour out when you flip it upside down, which is really, really great. Once you screw this on to the top though, that is the whole mechanism that makes this work. And the cool thing about these water brushes, of course, are the tips. This one is called a detailer. As you can see, it's a really fine detail brush tip. And the great thing about these brushes is that once you uh, press down basically and bend the bristles, the water will continuously flow. Usually to prime it, you wanna squeeze a little water through the barrel, through this chamber first. And once you see water flow, you don't need to squeeze it anymore because every time those bristles bend down, it will self-dispense water. Really gives you complete control of the water. Of course, the other one is going to be our flat water brush. Same kind of flow controlled chamber, but the top of this one you'll see is flat bristles. How cool is that? Really, really nice for backgrounds. So you can do all sorts of great uh, background watercolor effects, or if you wanted to create a wash of color, the top of these actually pop off. So I can take that and look at that, longer bristles. So I can really go in and do washes of color to fill backgrounds and then I can just snap this right back on and I'm back to my flat water brush. So here's some of the color things. What I've done is I've just gone in, took a piece of watercolor paper. You can try on watercolor paper a lot of different types of cardstock and I went and stamped with archival ink because of course archival is going to be waterproof. It's important that you stamp with a waterproof ink if you're going to do any sort of watercolor. So let me just slide this under here. Just I just want to show you a couple of things when it comes to coloring. So I've got my brush and made sure it's nice and wet, just working on my craft sheet. And then I'm gonna go in and I just wanna dip 
this into a little bit of that re-inker just to show you that when I go into color, look at how intense that is. It's almost black, but because it's re and it's concentrated, I can go with my brush and really start to work that color out. And you'll see that the further I work it out, the more translucent it gets. But the beauty of Distress is, of course, it will always maintain its color integrity. So I can still go in, kind of work some of that concentrated color into the background but this paper is porous so it's only going to work so far but that's all right still going to be a nice effect and I love how I can get that nice gradation going from that intense color to that uh, semi translucent color there you can see that the more water the more translucent that's going to become and of course I could dry that so the big difference between of course the re is the re is going to give me that concentrated colorant now if I go into the stains and let me just go over here and I'll just pick up a little bit of this um, from the stain you're going to see right away that when I pick this up of course it's going to be far more fluid in my palette I'll show you over here that I've just picked some um, right in here you can see it's just it's far more fluid in the palette so therefore when I go to actually color with it right from the beginning you'll see that you're going to get that blend in other words you're not going to have that intense factor that you do with the re -inker. so it really depends on your preference some people love the fact that they can go in with the re -inkers, get that bit of concentration and blend that out. Others like the fact that they could then just layer using the stains because you don't have to worry about the intensity. To clean the brush, you're simply just going to wipe it off because again, it's self-feeding, so the water just kind of rinses out the bristles. And even if I went in and picked up some of that barn door that I went in, look at that. It's wonderful. Now, can you mix? Of course, you can go in with that brush and you can dip in several wells and actually mix your color right there on the paper and you don't have to worry about contaminating either one. That's kind of the fun of doing a watercolor effect. Check that out. Pretty cool. Of course, if you wanted to go back and you wanted to combine the two, in other words, if I did this and I still wanted to go in with a little bit of intense color, I can still go in and pick up some color from the re inker and go in and add some highlights if I want to. Really, really fun to uh, use the ink palettes and the water brush working with Distress re inkers and Distress Stains for all sorts of fun watercolor effects. And like I said, because both of these ink palettes have that hinged lid, all I have to do is close this up and place it, of course we want to place it on a level surface because we don't want any of this stuff to, to drip or ooze out of the palette, but I can just take that and set those right onto a shelf or slide them in a drawer and I can come back to them anytime and work right from the palette. So once you make that, it's really nice. Another thing we can create a palette with which is really, really fun to do, of course, are alcohol inks. And you think, well, alcohol inks. Now, these, of course, are fast drying inks. This is a solvent-based ink. Dries in about seven to 10 seconds, and their specialty is non-porous things. Gloss paper, uh, glass, plastic, metal, even things like vellum and transparencies. Now, when you go to ink a palette, here's what you're going to do. You're gonna take your ink palette, open it up, and you're going to take your alcohol ink and actually drip it into a well. I probably do about 10 drops, um, or you can squeeze enough ink until it covers the bottom of the well, and then you are going to let this ink dry completely. So if you do your entire palette, I'd probably give it at least 30 minutes if you're gonna put that much alcohol ink into uh, the palette, depending of course on where you live and the weather and things like that, it may take a little longer or a little less. But this is all dry so you can kind of see that shine in there these inks are completely dry and i think that's really great because this palette i can use indefinitely and here's how i'm going to use it what i'm going to do to actually get this ink to come back to life is work with blending solution blending solution is to alcohol ink what water is to watercolor it's basically uh, the solvent that's in alcohol ink without any colorant. So that's why it's got like a little solvent and some resin in there. And this is really nice to actually re-wet and rework these colors. Now you cannot put this into a water brush. It's not recommended at all because the chemicals and the solvents in here will actually eat the plastic and the bristles of your water brush over time. So I don't ever recommend putting blending solution in a water brush. Instead, we actually sell a fillable pen. This is from Ranger as well. And this is designed specifically for alcohol inks. And all you do is you remove the cap. It has two ends. It's got a flexible kind of a brush nib like a marker. And the other end, of course, is going to be a fine detail marker. All you need to do is on the brush end, there's a little metal tab. You're just going to slide your fingernail right under there. And we're just going to lift this nib right out of the pen, just like that. We can take our blending solution, unscrew the cap, put the nib inside, give it a squeeze for about, I would probably say five to seven seconds. 
weight because there is a material inside here because once you fill it with uh, an alcohol ink, uh, you can't go back and clean it out. And that's why the beauty of this is you only need one pen. One pen filled with blending solution will allow you to use all of your colors and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to slide that back in. Once I fill my pen, I usually like to go back in there. Um, I would probably say about five or six times with that five to seven second squeeze so I can really get this nice and saturated because I want to make sure that the tip stays nice and wet. Another cool thing about this, of course, you can see it's got a sealed cap. So when you're storing this pen, you don't have to worry about the blending solution drying up in this pen. So it's safe to store it that way as well. And here's how it's going to work. You can, of course, work on a lot of different surfaces. Um, I like to work on vellum, but of course, gloss paper or um, metal or plastic or anything like that. Even if you wanted to do regular porous paper, just to show you, I'll show you how the color really shows up just on this porous paper. I'm just going to go in with my pen, and you can kind of hear it squeak, but it's clear right now. And all I need to do to pick up a color is actually swipe it right over that dry color. You'll see that it re-wets right on the tip of that, and check that out. I've got that instant blended alcohol marker, just like that. And the nib of this, it is self-cleaning. So you can see it goes right back to clear because blending solution does several things in the alcohol ink line. It will blend color, lighten color, and remove color. So what I'm going to do is I'll just kind of work on the back of this. I've stamped onto vellum, again using archival ink. But because this is a solvent, if I went over this ink, it would actually remove it. So what I'm going to do instead is turn the vellum over, and I'm going to color on the back side of the vellum. So I'll lay it over something white just so I can see the colors I'm going to work with. And again, I can just go right in, and I can color right on the vellum. I can pick up other colors. And I never have to worry about contaminating any of this, which is really, really nice because these inks are dry. So the more you kind of re-wet, the longer the color is going to give you uh, on that surface, kind of give you a longer blend time. And again, just to clean it, you're simply going to swipe it right onto your craft sheet just to clean that out. I'm just kind of playing around with color, just kind of just really having a go with this. You can see some of the colors that are a little more intense really give you much, much longer run. This one's raspberry, so this is going to give me a lot of color to play with. Now, if you were working with this, and let's say you wanted to clean it out a little bit quicker, you could go in just with blending solution if you wanted to. And I've often taken some blending solution and just apply a couple of drops right on my craft sheet. And I'll show you just kind of going in there and just kind of pull that in, see how I can just make that wet just to kind of clean out the brush. So if that's the case, you can do that. And, it, and also you can use that blending solution. Look what I'm doing right here. I'm just going in and see how I'm lightening that area as well because blending solution will blend, lighten, and remove. So if you ever get alcohol ink on a surface and you want to blend it a little bit more, you can actually go right in there and blend that out. So let me just go in and pick up a little bit of yellow right there because another cool feature of alcohol ink, oh, they do so much. I know this isn't an alcohol ink video, but gosh, I could talk for hours on alcohol ink. But one of the coolest things about it is, check this out. See how I already went over that with raspberry and it was that uh, kind of purple color, but now I just went over with yellow, but it didn't turn to brown, it actually stayed yellow. Alcohol ink is the only ink that will remove itself on a non-porous surface. So if you ever color and you want to change it, you can just go right back over that same exact area with a new color and it will replace it, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about ever making mud or doing anything like that. All right, so instead of just coloring and coloring, let me show you now if I flip this over, Look at that. Now we can see our stamped image, and I love how that color is kind of watercolored in the background, but of course this is on vellum. And you could do the same thing on transparencies because alcohol inks are designed for non-porous surfaces. And I'm just going to swipe that up, just kind of scribble that out, recap it, and now of course I have my alcohol ink palette and my fillable pen that I can also just store on a shelf and use it whenever I want. So those are just some ideas on how to work with the ink palette and of course the water brush, working with alcohol inks on non-porous surfaces or doing some watercolor effects with your re-inkers and stains. Have fun.